Hey everyone, welcome to round number three. Uh, I guess this is a keep. I mean, we do need lands. This isn't very explosive though, but I tend to keep these five landers on the draw. Um, just a lot can work to your advantage here, so I like to keep them, uh, especially when I have things like uh, six drops in my deck. Right, drawing one land in the next five turns isn't going to be too bad. Alright, Maverick Thought Burst is a good play. Now, the issue here is obviously that we don't have an artifact, right? Because Maverick Thought Burst is fine on turn five, uh, but that's obviously not where it's at its best. It's at its best on uh, turn two, turn three. Not turn two, obviously. Uh, turn three, turn four, something like that. If you ever play Maverick Thought Burst on turn three, you just feel like you're cheating. Thriving Rats. Alright, so that's probably going to be a 2-3 next turn, according to my calculations. No matter what I draw, really. There's not a true drop I can really draw to get that out of there. Although I could draw, like, Air of Innovation. Air of Innovation makes things interesting. Huh. Alright. This is for the 2-1, by the way. Uh, you get prizes for a 2-1, but you don't get any prizes or a 1-2. So we are playing for uh, two packs, one pack of Aether Revolt, one pack of Kaladesh, uh, two-thirds of the weight to a draft set here. So as always, thank you everybody for hanging out with me. Um, any comments, questions, concerns, anything you would have done different, just let me know uh, down in the comment section down below. I try my best to read every single comment and respond to everyone. Uh, if it's like more than a week after the video is put out, no promises, um, unless you like tag me in it and then I get the notification. But, uh, you know, if you come at me in a reasonable time frame, I'm usually pretty good about it, so, uh, you know, definitely hit me up. All right, Emerald, Gear Smasher, into Dukar, P-Foul, into Maverick Thopterist. Definitely feels a bit better, but uh, still very slow, so I just gotta hope that we can kind of outmaneuver our opponent here. Ether Torch Renegade is very good. Um, I mean, look, if we draw World of Virtuoso, we're in good shape. Okay, last match we literally drew out Aether Tidewell, and they just had it. They just had Cruel Finality and built the smash or built the last they had it all i tell you caught in the brites all right look i'm happy to take four here to play dukar p foul if he's caught, caught in the writing this i'm not super concerned um i don't have any ways to deal with this in the main deck or no i do i have uh ether trade ones i apologize not super concerned about it though just going to go ahead and uh, play the p foul nothing to eat the torch renegade yet that card is also way better as a surprise so uh ready to do that Next turn, I'm probably just paying the full five from Avicopterus, not really caring. And then the turn after, slamming Aether Turnigate plus Hinterland Drake. It obviously gets a bit sketchy if our opponent plays like a Pima Outrider here. Um, the cards in, or the creatures, I should say, in Aether Revolt are just so inefficient. Like, Scrounging Manda, or 2 2 for 2 is one of the best cards. Uh, there are just so many, like, 2 3s for 3 and a bunch of stuff like that that cards like Thriving Rhino and Pima Outrider are just insane. All right, so the full-on attack for four here. Just taking it, obviously. Not a lot we can do, just going to 10. Geez, no Pima Outrider. Iron Tread Crusher. Not much better, to be honest. Yep, unfortunately I gotta actually pay the entire cost here. I don't get exactly what I want here, but it's fine. Um, I can't attack with Dukara or Peafowl here because I have to be able to block uh, Thriving Rats with Thopterus, Thopter, Dukara, Peafowl, and let the Peafowl live, I think. Or you could kill the Peafowl and let the other two things live. I imagine that is not what's going to be happening, though. But we will see. They attack with Iron Trade Crusher. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. By the way, I don't think that's a quick concession. Like, I'm just dead. Just pretty stone dead there. All right, let's run it back. Um, oh, I did not have reverse engineer in the deck. So we not gone to we have not gone to cast confiscation coup yet. We've cast Aether Tide Whale. Uh, we have won in some other ways, but uh, we're gonna have to figure out a way to get to victory here again. Two one. Uh, this is for all the marbles. If you two one, you get prizes. If you want two, you don't. I think I'm gonna put this up anyways though. Um, I've been putting up a lot of three O drafts lately, which isn't me cherry picking which drafts I put up. Ooh, this is a good hand. It's honestly me just playing, just you know having a lot of 3-0s when I happen to play on camera, and then having all my 1-2s and 0-3s when I don't play on camera. So I've been a little lucky in that regard lately, but 
we do the best we can on this channel to kind of keep it real. Don't love drawing that land. Um, you know, really need a follow-up on turn four. This is a fantastic start, one of the best you can have, but, you know, without a follow-up on turn four, it doesn't do a whole heck of a lot. By the way, an Air of Innovation there would have gotten the play, because then the next turn we could have uh, Aether Chaser to plus Meta Lamp, made some energy, and then Whirler Virtuoso plus made some energy, and then Thopter, 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 kill you. Scrounging Bandar. Interesting. All right, I mean, we're just going to get in. Obviously making a guy here. Uh, the fact that it just, like, helps with a Bastion Inventor for next turn is sick. So turn 4-4-4 four, 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 Hexproof here on the play. Nice little Whirler Virtuoso. Look at them just letting the Thopter fly. Ugh, fly away, Thopters. Fly away. One of le this is one off lethal is that what it says? Yeah, I cannot read today. Cannot read. Alright, so gotta remember to make the Thopter. Eh, it doesn't actually matter when I make the Thopter. I was gonna say you usually want to make it on your opponent's turn, obviously. Um but because I'm gonna be using it for Bastion Inventor, it doesn't matter when I draw it, so I can actually or when I do it, so I can actually play it whenever, because if I draw an era of innovation, my plan might change. I might want to play era, make a Thopter get energy. Or I want to play Era, attack with Aether Chaser, make a guy get energy. Ooh, that's not realistic anymore. But that makes Aether Trade Winds awfully spicy. Uh, yeah, I'm, no, I'm just going to make a guy here. I don't know, maybe that's bad. Alright, um... Yeah, I mean, I guess I just do this. I just got to play the 4-4 four, four when I can play the 4-4. Four, four. I can make another Thopter at any point in time, basically. Um, or next turn, I can rebound Aether Chaser. But I don't know how good of a play that's going to be. So basically, we can expand our board by one Thopter if we want to. No one, by the way, in the history of AER Drafted has misclicked this and given me counters by accident. But, you know, I'm, I hope it. I still I mean, I'm holding out hope. So you get to draw a card there. Reckless Racer, that's a very good draw. Um, I wonder if it's, okay, so I'm just definitely attacking with Thopter, Bastion Inventor. Because I mean, there just is the possibility that I want to bounce Aether Chaser in a thing. But Aether Chaser is not that good against a 3-3, so maybe it's just better for me to bounce Whirler Virtuoso. Okay, no blocks. That is more what I thought they were going to do. <laughs> Taking 5, going to 11 here. Uh, we get to play a Reckless Racer. Obviously now this land in our hand is very relevant. Um, I still think we wanted to get the fifth land on the battlefield, because we want to be able to play six drops, like Aether Tide Will next turn, obviously. But, um, you know, I, I mean, if they, like, mind rot us, all of a sudden we have to get rid of our hand, which is decent. So that's a little unfortunate. But they would be, like, taking their turn to do so, so we'd still get to attack with, you know, Inventor Thopter next turn. But uh, I think we'd be a little bit behind at that point. The question now is, do I use it on Aether Poisoner just to get in again? I don't know about that. Do I use it on an Armorcraft Judge? If I use it on, on an Armorcraft Judge, that gets really sketchy. Welder Automaton. Alright, um, so I can play and replay Whirler this turn. I think that's what I'm going to do. Hmm. Actually, I can Welder and then also keep up Aether Trade Winds and Aether Trade Winds next turn. So this way I'm playing around a bunch of stuff. I'm playing around like all removal spells, all possible weird him moving things with Scrounging Bandar, all weird like Hunt the Weeks of Prey Ponds, and I can ping him for one if I need to, uh, which is pretty helpful because hitting him for two a turn is going to kill him in about five turns. So uh, that's not super fast collect, that's not super slow, especially when I have all these creatures around. I could have attacked with Bastion Inventor that turn, but he would have just blocked with Aether Poisoner. 
Then that and that wouldn't even opened up Reckless Racer. Reckless Racer is really good, but I think Aether Chaser is just better to be honest. Yeah, I really just think it's better. All right, let's see if he puts the counters on Defiant Salvager. He does not. All right, let's see what he got. Four or six drop here. Um, if it's something like Dawn Feather Eagle, that can get out of hand a little quickly, but we'll see. Hopefully, it's not Dawn Feather Eagle, and then we don't have to worry about it. Ooh, come on! Don't attack with everything. Just attack with like one thing. Oh, no attacks. Okay. Well, I am. Uh, I'm happy to ping. Again, they can have tiding conclusions in response here on like uh, Whirler Virtuoso or whatever, and that does make my life a little bit harder. Oh yes. Oh yes. So being able to Thopterus trade wins Thopterus is pretty sick here. I don't think they're setting up for like a Fumigate. I don't think they would play this way if they were. Maybe they are. I think I'm ready to just trade with Inventor for the Poisoner. Because if they're just playing tutus and stuff, then at some point bouncing this Armorcraft Judge is going to be very, very good. And I also want to put them in a spot where, I don't know, the thing is, like, bouncing Maverick Thopterus is the real dream. Whatever, we're going to get in there. They want to trade with Aether Poisoner if they can. Or if, yeah, you know. I can't force them into a two-for-one pre-combat with Aether Trade wins, so, you know, there's not a lot of fun there. That's fine for me. Decommission, okay. All right, all right. I see you, I see you. We got Maverick Thopters into his house, though. Have no fear, have no fear. Uh, we can make a lot of Thopters next turn. A whole lot of them. Um, I would like him to put all the counters on the 2-2 so that I can bounce it at the end of the turn when I bounce my Maverick Thopters. Ironclad Revolutionary. That could be the thing I bounce. So now that he's committed that to the board, I'm pretty sure that if he had, if, I mean, he's not playing Fumigate, he might be playing Yanni's Expertise or Hazardous Conditions. Both those are bad for me, but I just have to kill him as fast as possible here. Um, what do I bounce? I'm just bouncing Maverick Thopterist and... The 4-4 just tie up his whole next turn. Yep. Because now I can attack with Reckless Racer and a World of Virtuoso and Wild Automaton. I really hope that that's what he actually decides to attack with. Bounce and bounce. I'm going to make some more Thopters if you don't mind. Can't believe we got this so late. This card's insane. Does nobody realize how insane that card is? All right, I'm not going to trade for his three three here. Um, I am actually just going to attack with all my two power things. Look, Kenny have prey upon here. Yeah, but that would be his last card, and that's fine with me. That's fine with me if that's his last card. All right. Um, so now we have something to pitch to Reckless Racer. Just going to get in. Drew land. Um, so, all right. So I don't have enough stuff to tap to this. So, right. So then I have three. Nope. Just got to. There we go. All right. I mean, setting up for the win next turn very, very nicely here. Um, even if he plays Ironclad Revolutionary, obviously uh, these four and this is going to get through, so not too worried about that. Uh, again, I mean, I'm pretty dead to a bunch of sweepers, but I think we got there. All right, on to game number three, the big cojones. Or, I mean, that's just big coke. I don't know, whatever. The big... The big something. That's what I got to say here. Um, Metallurgic Summonings, Reverse Engineer, both interesting, but probably neither making the deck. 
think we can just keep it the way it is. The question is how good is Iron Shred Crusher against Death Touchers? And Appetite for the Unnatural? And Decommission? Yeah, man, actually, that actually might be a liability. Could be a liability. Self Assembler, Foundry Assembler, um, Emerald Gear Smasher out. This actually fixes the curve a little bit. I do like this. All right, I'm in. Go a little bit bigger, just so I can, you know, interact with all of his big green dummies, you know, and get a little more value at the top end. Uh, take out the middle of the rare and stuff that I didn't really need. Ugh, this hand's so gross. Like, I, if I keep this, I just have to draw infinite lands. I literally can't do anything. This hand doesn't do anything until turn four. I need to draw land, 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 literally. And I don't even think I win then. Mulligan. Keep. Um, bottom. Like, now that I have self-assembler, I'm really excited to go get foundry assembler, so... That's the thing with uh, Self Assembler and the Foundry Assembler is that the Foundry Assembler doesn't go find the Self Assembler, so it's not like uh, when you have just have two Self Assemblers where if you have one, you can automatically go the other, go get the other. Sometimes the other thing is just totally dead against you. All right, well, Aether Torch Renegade is going to do a very good job of dealing with that. Again, uh, I have a very good hand on the draw in this spot, so I'm not too worried immediately. But there are some like terrible things we could face down, so to speak. Yeah, ugh. Smells like winding constrictor. So we're gonna need to draw a land to get that out of the way. Uh, I'm just gonna play an Aether Torch Renegade to kind of m mitigate the three one here. It doesn't help us it does help us get through too, because we can we can attack with Aether Chaser next turn. But it's not great. I mean if they play like a scrounging bandar right here, it's pretty bad. Or a big P Mao Rider or something. Really got to draw land here to deal with Winding Constrictor. Walking Ballista would be... Oh, no. Are you serious? Are they playing Constructed? Yeah. Jeez. I don't even know what we kill now. I mean, I guess we kill Ballista. But then he stalls a Winding Constrictor! <laughs> Ugh. God. Stalls a winding. We have to pray to the heavens that nothing bad happens with this stupid winding constrictor. No scrounging bandars. All right, no scrounging bandars. Scrounging bandar winding constrictor gets out of hand quick. All right, gotta draw land here, right? Gotta go uh, self assembler into whatever. I just gotta play self assembler, I think. Land. Get that big four four on the battlefield. Could have played weld fast monitor. Uh, welder automaton that would have been just fine as well I would love to use his ability to get his buddy his friend his compadre his companion oh my god how did that happen I'm like jumping for joy if I somehow beat this draw jumping for literal joy serious you would do me like that. <laughs> uh, this is the face of defeat. This is the face of defeat. He's going to play Walking Ballista plus Winding Constrictor twice in one game, and he's still going to lose. Can you believe that? Isn't that just insane? They're going to do it twice in one game and lose? How insane is that? All right, come on, attack. I mean, I have to block, even though I know they have built the last. Whew. 
but I'm not going to be able to steal their... Is it worth it just to steal their winding constrictor, though? I mean, if I can just kill their constrictor here, then it's different. Alright, going for the constrictor kill. Alright, I think I wait on this for a second. I think I weld fast monitor into weld automaton here. I could take the constrictor. Oh my god, he's going to have four counters on that dumb thing. And he's going to shoot all my things with it. But he would just have three counters. It's not like that big of a change. This is so stupid. It's like, I want to Confiscation Coup the Walking Ballista, but as soon as I Confiscation Coup the Walking Ballista, bad things are going to happen. He's just going to kill everything I own. He's going to kill this and... Yeah. Already killing that. Already killing that. Shoot it again. <sighs> this is just the sickness here. This card equals unfair in Magic the Gathering. Do I just steal his Walking Ballista now? Or not his Walking Ballista, his Winding Constrictor? Winding Constrictor is such a dumb Magic card. All right, still got to keep the land back up in case they have uh, something like a implement of malice. I don't think I take the winding constrictor here. I think I just let them do them. The thing is, if they play like a demon of the dark memes and I steal it, I'm just a genius. Walking with a winding constrictor. Tight draw, man. All right, so for everyone that uh, liked watching the NCAA Good Magic, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it, of course, and of co as always, like thank you to the people, the great people at Seems Good Magic for giving me this opportunity to uh, play with y'all. Some sorry that the games were a little longer today. I like to keep the games in like the ten to twelve minute range, but I don't really have a ton of control after that. Of that, I can obviously just play as fast as I can play, and that's about it. Um, the quality is going to decrease dramatically as I go overseas in the next few days. So. Um, just be aware of that. Uh, I'm not trying to hose anybody. I'm not trying, you know, I'm not downgrading software. It's just, that's what's going to happen when I go overseas. So I'm trying to record as much as I can here. But, you know, I can't record that many weeks in advance. So those are just the things that are going to have to happen. Um, I kind of have to attack to try to win. I have no idea how I win this game. It probably involves him, like... Doing something really dumb. I think I need to steal this because they just put more counters on Walking Ballista, and then it's game over. All right, come on. Confiscation coup, work it. Come on. First time I draw you, you got to work it. You got to work it. All right, we got it. Um. So, yeah. So if he attacks, I got to block because then he can just walk and ballista me to death. Then I get to attack with the 4-4 four, four, and the 3-3. Three, three. I mean, that's probably not going to work out, but it could. There's a theoretical possibility that I win this game. The theoretical possibility is very, very small, but I couldn't just, like, for instance, if I took Restoration Gearsmith there, he would just have to, uh, he would just pump here, and, and I would, you know. Uh, oh, I'm just dead, aren't I? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. My name is Sam. As always, check me out uh, in the description down below. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Sorry for the disappointing one, dude. I thought the matches and the gameplay and stuff was kind of cool, though, so I'm still going to post on Seems Good Magic next week. Um, so I really appreciate it, and I will uh, see you tomorrow.